morning class so today we will take up a fresh topic and in this fresh topic uh, the intention was where is data mining apply on what kind of data data mining is going to be operated so this is what the prime intention of putting the thing so now in such a case here we have lot of uh, conventional examples we have lot of conventional examples from a uh, relational database management system to the data warehouse to the operational data we call it as transaction databases followed by uh, advanced databases and repositories etc in this uh, we will be having lot of case studies regarding object or object relational content uh, things related to spatial then time series text mining we call it as multimedia data etc and multiple heterogeneous data followed by the world wide web so these are some of the primitives where data mining is going to be applied so the holistically why the concept and where the concept is going to be applied means the concept will be uh, applied the concept will be applied to all these primitives the very first word we are going to call it as a relational database so in general we are going to call it as a rdbms so you have enough exposure uh, towards rdbms where we say data is going to be stored in forms of uh, uh, rows and columns data is going to be operated in form of rows and columns so we bring this primitive here called as a uh, relational database the second way of putting the things will be the data warehouse when we are going to call it as a data warehouse it is looking up with the four words one we will be call it as a subject oriented two we are going to say it is integrated three we will call it as a non volatile and fourth one we call here as a time variant so these are the four primitives where data warehouse is going to look at when we are going to call it as subject oriented then the intention was it brings up the domain business so it can be an education it can be a health it can be services trading e-commerce retail so to any of a sector data warehouse can be applied so that is the reason why we are going to call this primitive as a subject oriented the second way of putting the things was integrated when we are going to use the word called as an integrated then it is getting data from multiple sources it is going to get the data from multiple sources so multiple sources in sense it mean to say it can get data from 
flat files in general they will be stored in dot csv comma separated values two they will be from clouds three the local databases so these are are put together these are all brought to a single format so this single format we will call it as a data warehouse which we are going to call it as a large repository which we are going to call it as large repository so the very first property of data warehouse was it is subject oriented the second property was it is integrated from multiple sources that is it can take up a flat file it can take up the data from clouds it can have its uh, local databases and all the three things it is going to bring into a single way and thereby it is putting the things into a single location where we are going to call such items here as a data warehouse then we need to understand non volatile when we are going to call here as a non volatile it is going to give the concept of permanent storage it is going to say it happens to have permanent storage so once the data was in a data warehouse it is safe secure and it is going to be protected so safety permanent all these aspects they are going to be the properties of the data warehouse and the fourth thing was we will call it as time variant time variant means it is going to store historic data it is going to store historic data when we are going to call it as an historic data it saves data over times maybe 20 years 30 years 40 years of past data so it can have vast volumes it is going to store vast volumes of data it is going to give up vast volumes of data so that is why we are going to say um, the data warehouse is going to be a time variant so with all these properties with all these properties now you can look at at this diagram this diagram and code this diagram it is going to encode the things in such a manner that it is it is taken up a retail shopping example and it is using all electronics database it is using all electronic database where you can see the first store was at chicago the second store was at new york the third store was at tarando and fourth store was at vancouver so you can see the uh, retail shopping example with the 
all electronics is going to be the name of a database. So as we have Reliance Shopping Mall, as we have in orbit shopping mall in the same way uh, there is an example called as a uh, all electronics and this all electronics is going to databases at four locations chicago new york toronto and vancouver so the first two it happens to be in usa the first two it happens to be in USA and the next two they are going to happen in Canada. So Chicago and New York they fall in the country called as uh, uh, and watch a country called as Canada. Now the data scientist or the data miner whoever is going to be there he wants uh, to understand how his data is there. He wants to identify what are my customer behavior. They need to decode the customer behavior and they need to decode the customer habits of purchasing the things, etc. So he has to bring those data into this location. He has to bring those data into the location and this is where he is going to apply ET. He is going to apply the word called as ETNL. So that is, we are going to call it as extraction, transformation, and extraction, transformation, and loading. So using these three primitives, he is going to bring the databases to the data warehouse. So how he is going to do? He is going to make cleaning of a database. He is going to make integration of a database. He is going to make transformation of a database. He is going to make loading of a database and he is going to prefetch the data. So five words, they are going to be processed with extraction, transformation and loading that means there can be a chance of missing values there can be a chance of missing values so what is missing value so assume that uh, there is an id card and in that id card it was printed some register number and name and the back side of the id card you have your blood group so you visit the campus and they will ask you what is your blood group so some students may know their blood group. Okay, they will tell, okay, my blood group is positive, A positive, etc. And some girls will tell, uh, I didn't made up to now an opportunity to get blood test checked. So I don't know my blood group. So obviously the operator, he will put null. The operator will put null. He don't have any other option. He can't make a uh, diagnosis there to you and then generate the blood group and he won't put the value. So that is not at all feasible. So only thing was he will put null value because you didn't give the data. So on the ID card, you can check the back side of your ID card. You have a blood group column. So you have to give your blood group. If you don't know the blood group uh, column, so what the operator will do, he has to put null. He can't put it empty. So such is where, such is where missing values or null values, they are going to play a major role. So if I want to do some analysis, I should eliminate missing values, I should eliminate null values, I should eliminate the not available values. So removing of irrelevant attributes or data at that case, we are going to call here as a data cleaning. So misleading values which are going to be in a database may harm the data analytics because from data cleaning we will get pure data from data cleaning we will get pure data so that is the reason why before we are going to put the things into a data warehouse 
the things has to be clean next thing i talked about integration that means we have stores at chicago we have stores at new york the all electronic store uh, database a uh, company a retail shopping company has store at toronto and vancouver now he has to bring the four different databases and he has to put it together so that means i have uh, a block i have b block i have c block and i have d block a b c d blocks are there this is college example now you are putting it into a single data warehouse warehouse so this is what you can call it as a svcw so four different locations a block is at one location b block at one location c block at one location d block at one location now you have to put a b c d blocks to a single flag single database you need to make integration you need to make integration so that is where a data warehouse is going to project next for the local databases there are some pet names there are some nicknames so the names are one we are going to call them as data marts partial data warehouse we are going to call it as data marts so the local databases where we are going to make at location we call them as data marts so a is a data block b block is a data mart c block is a data mart d block is a data mart and all of them they are integrated and brought together to a single warehouse we call that definition here as a data warehouse so this is what the diagram we are going to get so this is what the diagram we are going to get so the next thing was uh, we have a uh, query and analytics we do have query and analytics so how is this query and analytics is going to happen query and analytics so we have query and analytics query and analytics so how is this query and analytics happening so query and analytics will happen with a subject called as data mining primitives or will happen with data mining functionalities so query and analytics they happen with data mining primitives and data mining functionalities okay what are there so very simple first one we call it as supervised learning second one we will call it as unsupervised learning three we are going to call it as association using these three concepts itself data mining is going to have its impact so when we are going to call it as supervised learning when we are going to call it as supervised learning it is nothing but we have to say with labels and the area we are going to call it as classification the area we are going to call it as classification fine now what are the techniques we are going to get in this classification the techniques one we are going to call it as regression two we are going to call it as bayes nav bayes three we are going to call it as decision trees 
random forest so in this way there are many more examples uh, for this classification in wise maybe in other courses or course era courses maybe you have enrolled to some uh, uh, data sciences machine learning courses there you will be having learning about this classification algorithms along the same pattern that is uh, regression with uh, linear and with uh, logistic so when we are going to do with an numeric data and we make dependencies for it so it is linear value then we are going to work on set to get it as a categorical value and we will use the sign function etc though we will be getting the logistic regression so in the unit 4 we will have a detailed discussion regarding this linear regression logistic regression nav based theorem bayesian theorem the decision trees and random forest etc which are going to be part of our course itself the other primitive was we are going to call it as unsupervised learning so in this unsupervised learning the emphasis was to move towards the word called as clustering to move towards the word called as clustering clustering is nothing but grouping of similar items based on patterns based on similarity matrix based on patterns and based on similarity matrix we will look for classifying the things without labels without labels so there is a basket with tomatoes there is a basket with potatoes tomatoes in red color potatoes in gray color put it before a child ask the child to separate it so he will group all the tomatoes in one potatoes in one how he has done it no two tomato is same so that means there is no there is a difference we call it as inter similarity tomato color is different potato color is different we call it as intra similarities so a one year two year kid he does machine learning in his brain where he knows no two tomatoes are of same but still based on the common similarities of a red color he is grouping them similarly he knows no two potatoes will be as same but still based on the color he is going to bring it to a thing thereby he is going to put a sticker that it is a tomato therefore he is putting a sticker or a label we are going to call it as potato so without labels he without any prior knowledge he is going to do the things we call it as a clustering knowing the things with knowledge we call it as classification so this is the two uh, major uh, distinctions where we need to understand so we talked about warehouses we talked about uh, the query processing which is happening in the warehouse and thereby what was the end outcome the end outcome was to bring knowledge to make predictions to bring forecasting how he is going to make a forecast in have a cgp of 9 i have a cgp of 8 in my first year in my second year now the answer is what is your cgp for the third year? so obviously i am going to say 8.5 so how, how did i get that how did i get this means i have taken the historic data so 9 and 10, we are going to call it as historic data or it is going to be the past data and based on the past data i am going to predict okay the next year cgpa of this girl will be 8.5 so i am going to predict it i am going to make a forecasting then how i am going to represent it i am going to represent it with pie charts bar charts and graphs okay this is uh, 9 cgpa this is 8 cgpa this is 8.5 cgpa so 
this year i am forecasting this girl will get 8.5 cgpa in this way you are going to mention it and give the reports to the clients or to the business team so this is what the main intention of developing a business with the data warehouse model the next thing was we need to understand the operational data or we are going to call it as a transactional database so this is the first time you are going to listen this word transactional database maybe you have word object oriented databases or general databases etc but transactional databases are an intermediary databases they are going to be a intermediate databases where they are going to have where they are going to have transactions for that day for that record or for that event so assume you have visited the dmart or you have visited the reliance mart etc there you purchased some belongings and then they are going to generate a bill so every bill is going to have a identifier you purchase a pen for a pen there will be a barcode you purchase a book there will be a barcode so you purchase a dress there will be a barcode so for everything they are going to have some ids they are going to have some roll numbers register numbers some ids so this is what we call here as a transaction id and this transaction id they will understand your basket what were in the trolley what you are going to carry what the items you are going to purchase for that day so all those items are going to be listed and you will be getting one id and this is called as customer id so for you he understand for this month this girl has visited dmart and this girl has purchased these five items then again she will again take up another customer id then again when you purchase the uh, content and get the bill again there so in this way multiple transactions will be taken up and now you will have common elements here so this is what we are going to call here as an association analysis so association analysis is also one of a primitive database is also one of a primitive database of the analytics here so we were talking about the third concept here association so in the association which is also used for the content here so association this is purely purely based on a word called as market basket analysis so what was the primary intention of market basket analysis was they need to predict they need to predict or they need to analyze the customers buying habits customer buying habits so a person purchased bread a person purchased butter then obviously he will say okay this person has purchased bread and and butter definitely the probability of purchasing the jam will be this much so with some certain confidence with some certain support rules are going to be generated by the machine so that is where we call there as machine learning so machine will understand how the customer is purchasing what is the customer he is going to purchase thereby they will give some recommendations so best example you watch a lot of videos in youtube when you are watching lot of videos on your youtube at the end the what is your interest next interested video that it will be displayed so there they are going to identify your behavior they are identifying your mindset so what type of what type of buying habit you are going to have thereby they are going to give that items so that is what a recommendation engine we are going to call fine 
the next primitive was we need to understand about the advanced databases we are going to call here apps so you have a lot of repositories in github you have a lot of repositories in kaggle there i think most of you in your mini projects in your wise projects you have taken some data sets from kaggle and github and thereby you have analyzed the patterns you have used even twitter tweets so now those databases are called as advanced databases so traditional databases are not going to store those contents the data warehouse contents they are going to store such information so such is where one of an example we are going to call as a spatial databases so spatial database it is going to give you the uh, maps the google maps the um, bing maps etc so they are giving geospatial visualization based on longitude and based on latitude so where is this spatial database application means spatial database application means sitting in your home as you are doing work from home or studying from home so in people work from home you are going to say studying from home so you are busy in studying so obviously you put an order you put an order at swiggy or you put an order at zomato so obviously you put your home location you put your home location it is home location and then you book a parcel at abhiruchi hotel in bemvaram so obviously or you can book some pizza from the dominos or kfc etc so obviously you have this item home location you are going to have a server at swiggy your putting some pizzas or etc from kfc etc so they need to have some map they need to have some navigation so that navigation it is purely based on maps so where is your house means it is going to be with longitude and it is fixed up with latitude longitude and latitude the coordinates of your house are going to be considered then for again the coordinates of the kfc the coordinates of the content uh, the order information so they are going to be taken up and shortest path shortest path using graph theory will be taken up there and they will identify you the route map they will give you the route map within few 15 minutes your order will be displayed in this way they are going to give so how is all this possible means it is possible by maintaining a database called as spatial databases so spatial databases along with the order information they are going to make maps they are going to maintain maps they are going to maintain coordinates where they are going to have shortest path where the travel time is minimized the optimization is rendered longitude latitude are configured so that is the reason why we are going to call such items as advanced databases that is the reason why we are going to call such items as advanced databases the next thing the next thing was we are going to call as hypertext and multimedia data hypertext and multimedia data so when we are going to call it as multimedia data multimedia data so the word itself it is saying multimedia that is it will have audio it will have video it will have audio information it will have video information and it is going to have the user recommendations user choices so traditional databases traditional databases like uh, um, rdbms they are not going to store you the images they are not going to store the images etc they are going to store the content only in a two dimensional way rows and columns only two dimensional way rows and columns but when we are going to talk about a multimedia data at that time it is going to talk about audio data video data 
image data so the database should support all these formats the database it is going to support all these formats so that is where the case we are going to call here as a multimedia data so in multimedia data the most important primitive will be the audio information will be the video information will be the image information so all these items are put together and thereby they are going to be input to the data warehouse they are going to be input to the data warehouse from the data warehouse they are going to be performing data data mining so this is what one of a case study or it is going to be a one of an example where data warehouse is going to support so again i repeat it is going to be a vast repository or you are going to call it as it is a large database in this large database we are going to put the contents in structured form we are putting the things in structured form so putting the things in structured form and thereby we are going to have this in vast databases after that we are going to perform data mining so again what will be the data mining means the data mining primitives so again what will be the data mining primitives means again it will goes up with the same thing that is one it goes with supervised learning two it goes with unsupervised learning three it goes with association so repeated to any type of database whether it is going to be a spatial database whether it is going to be a text mining database whether it is going to be a general database so in any of an item all these contents are going to be repeated so these are some of the new applications where the data mining is going to play a prominent role next word we are going to have object oriented databases we are going to have object oriented relational databases so we have heard about a word called as rdbms and now we are now putting one more word object oriented relational database management system so what will be the super specialty of this content they are put with two terms object oriented that means they are going to support the object oriented features that is you can call class which is to be an abstract then you are going to create an instance for it a real world instance object so we call here as an object then we are going to provide security mechanisms so how we are going to provide security mechanisms means we are going to provide data encapsulation or we are going to put it as data binding so how we are going to put data encapsulation how we are going to provide data binding means yes we are going to use access specifiers like private like public like protected so we are going to put these primitives and we are going to give securities via locking etc so these are some of the primitives along with this we have the other features such as inheritance such as polymorphism inheritance polymorphism and overloading overriding so these are some of the most important or prominent features where the object oriented databases they are to specify so along with the relational uh, uh, content object oriented databases content is also going to be supported at this time the next thing was we are going to call as time relevant data time relevant data means here 
we will go up with stock marketing we will go up the things with time series data so time series data means we are now looking at an example called as stock marketing there the primary intention was trading trading in sense we have share market so there will be some bank assume that it is an indian bank so indian bank on 3rd february 2022 is some 1000 rupees and again indian bank share is going to be on here at 9 am it is 1000 at 10 am it is 1050 at 11 am it is 1100 at 12 noon it is again 10070 so now you can see that according to the time the data is going to be fluctuated according to the time data is going to be fluctuated so at one time it is going to have one value at another time it is going to have an another value at another time it is going to have another value so in this way the data is going to be migrated with the time intervals so it is not going to be static it is purely called as a dynamic entity it is purely called as a dynamic entity so as it is going to be a dynamic entity now it, a traditional databases will not be fit traditional databases will not be fit therefore time series data is going to be recommended with a data warehouse so number of transaction entities are large and changing over time and changing over time at that time a conventional databases will not give you the answer the only solution was you need to put them in a data warehouse so time series data will vary according to time the best example was we were calling it as stock marketing in stock marketing the share of a price the share of a price share of a company we it will vary over seconds or it will vary over minutes so when a budget meeting was given up a sensex we will have sensex which it will be up or it will be down so based on the announcement of a finance minister based on the announcement of a finance minister there itself people will do based on their words whether to invest in that stock whether to invest on the stock or whether not to invest on the stock they are deciding there itself so there they are concentrating much on the time series they are going to have a varying factor much on a time series so traditional database will not record huge volumes of data so at that time large databases are needed so there the content such as data warehouse is going to play fine if large data is there conversational searching algorithms will not be prominent again there is an intention to bring data mining so it is blended with statistics it is blended with mathematics it is blended with machine learning algorithms it is blended with domain and all applications so all these are put together therefore people will, will get a pattern people will get forecasting people will get business intelligence over time so these are all some of the prominent examples where the uh, advanced databases are going to 
be stored in a data warehouse and they are going to get this application. Fine. How are the data stored in advanced databases? The next question was, how are the data or how is the data stored in advanced databases? They can be with objects, they can be with stremi structured, they can be with unstructured. So there are th three mechanisms, there are three mechanisms are going to play a prominent role where data mining can be taken up. One we are going to call here as, one we are going to call it as structured data. So structured data, some of the examples will be the relational database management system and data is going to be stored in form of rows. Data is going to be stored in form of rows and columns. And second one, we are going to call it as unstructured data. So in unstructured data, the thing was, it is uh, uh, here, the structured data, we will have the tabular form and in unstructured form, we'll be having the tweets, we will be having uh, the text mining content has to be made. So basically unstructured data will be taken up from Facebook will be taken up from Twitter posts, from YouTube comments. So all the social media content, WhatsApp. So all these social media content data, we call here as an unstructured data. Okay, how the things has to be uh, materialized in unstructured data means the things will be materialized in unstructured data with a software called as NoSQL. With a software called as NoSQL. So here we do have a SQL or MySQL, we have a SQL server. So a lot of prominent uh, 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 vendors are there be providing uh, structured data. But there are examples for unstructured data and mostly the market leader was NoSQL, which people will use to understand the tweets, campaigns, etc. Coming to the third word, we are going to call it as semi-structured, where it can happen to handle both structured data and to both the unstructured data. So we talked about object oriented databases at a stretch. Then we talked about the object relational content. We talked about the ordering of food from KFC to your home with the latitudes and longitude mapping, etc. There we have a coordinate system and that it is visible by storing the maps in a database, etc. We called it as a spatial databases. And thereby we talked about storing of the price stock price, ups and downs, the Sensex, the stock market, etc. It is purely time varying. So we say that example, it is going to be fall in the uh, time series databases. So thereby uh, storing the audio data, video data, the animations, the images data is going to be in the database stored and made for analytics. We call such information here as a multimedia data. So in this way, we talked about uh, uh, prominent uh, applications where the data warehouse and data mining are going to play. So uh, let us uh, recap of what we have learned for today. So today we have uh, begin with a word called as data mining, where and what kind of data data mining is going to do. The very first application we talked was the relational databases. So it is going to be in rows and columns and it takes up in form of a, a two dimensional way. And the second thing was we defined data warehouse. We defined the data warehouse. 
the first property what we mentioned was it is for a domain specific next one we call it is going to be an integrated integrated third thing it will having large volumes of data so it is non volatile and it is time variant so historic data is going to happen so large in sense it can hold 10 years data 20 years data 30 years data where a excel sheet or a general database we can't maintain that so there the advantage of data warehouse is taking up then visiting to dmart buying some content putting in the mark basket and when you pay the bill we call it as market basket analysis so at that point they will analyze what are the items you are purchased and they will predict you next visit if you purchase this these are the items you can be having so they give you recommendations via whatsapp or messages so that is where the transactional database is going to give it advantages then uh, the advanced version of relational databases was an object oriented databases where the security is going to be provided database itself is created as a class and you say employee e1 employee e2 so employee will be assumed as a class name e1 and e2 they will be assumed as an object name and data will be taken up in form of object oriented relationship with the words like uh, inheritance polymorphism encapsulation etc and the other word we call the things with uh, latitudes longitudes and storing the content with forms of maps etc we call that application as a spatial databases the other was the sensex the stock market application where a stock of a company will may increase will fall will be steady based on the time and it changes within seconds and minutes so all the transactions has to be recorded where a general database will not be feasible so we will go with a data warehouse and then the text data the tweets are going to be analyzed the unstructured data is going to be analyzed with precision recall etc and we get those applications to towards text mining databases followed by storing of audio video animation images all are stored in a database we say such application happens with the multimedia databases and putting structured putting unstructured and putting semi structured so you say such word here as a heterogeneous databases so we work with structured data we work with unstructured data or a semi structured which is going to be a hybrid so we say this it any type of data can be taken up so we call this one as a heterogeneous data so these are the different entities what we have studied for today so we will 149 students uh, have joined the class now i am downloading the attendance sheet